Hey guys, this is our Aya 210 Let's Play project and we are going to play The Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 1. The Walking Dead is a single player, digital, offline, adventure game based on the comic book series of the same name. It was created by Telltale Games and was initially released on PS3, Xbox 360 and PC in April of 2012. Since then, it has been available for download on major platforms including iOS, Android, OS X and PS4 among several others. This game is responsible for revitalizing the weakened graphic adventure genre when it sold for 8.5 million units within just its first year of release, which makes its success an exemplary model for this genre. The Walking Dead Episode 1 story is set in the US state of Georgia, more specifically Atlanta, with the events of the episode occurring shortly after the beginning of a fictional zombie apocalypse that devastated their area. The story centers around the protagonist Lee Everett, a former university professor and convicted criminal. At this point in time, it is not clear whether or not he is guilty at all. The police car then got in an accident, allowing Lee to escape. Early on in the game, Lee discovers that the child named Clementine is left alone in an abandoned home and he decides to take responsibility of her. As the game went on, they met and befriended another family consisting of Kenny, Kacha, and Duck, and ended up traveling with them to the town of Macon, Georgia. Here, the truth is finally revealed as we learn that our protagonist, Lee Everett, killed a state senator who was sleeping with his wife, and that Macon is his hometown, which he had to abandon after being charged with murder. Afterwards, Lee, along with his group of survivors, escapes the zombie-infested neighborhood and eventually seek refuge in an old abandoned motel. Since it is just one of many episodes for this game series, the ending of the episode is deliberately open-ended as they will explore what happens next in subsequent episodes. According to Lindsay Grace's Game Types, an adventure game offers exploration as one of its main attractions and this is clearly evident in The Walking Dead as there are several different locations and different interactable set pieces that the player can explore, click, and learn more about throughout the game. For example, one of the early scenes in the game has our main character Lee explore a seemingly abandoned house. In this scene, the player is given the possibility to learn more about the family residing in this house by exploring the home and clicking on all the interactable objects presented to them. Another example is when Lee and Clementine were in the Herschel farm and the player is given an even bigger area to explore with even more interactable objects to examine and learn more about. Additionally, an adventure game should have narrative arc and this is evident in The Walking Dead as there is a clear storyline from the beginning of the episode all the way to the end. As we see Lee's character experience tremendous growth from a criminal on his way to prison to becoming a father figure to a child that is not even his. Also, he took on the responsibility of becoming a leader of his own survival group. Moreover, a skill required for an adventure game is reasoning, and this is definitely a skill needed and utilized in The Walking Dead as the players are presented with challenging moments where they would have to make a quick decision that will affect how certain events transpire further along in the game. For instance, in this intense and fast-paced scene, we were given the option to choose which character to save between Carly and Doug. Using our reasoning skills, we recalled how Carly saved us earlier in the game using her accuracy and shooting ability, and thus decided that this might come in useful for Lee and the rest of the survivors further into the game, which led to our deci decision of saving her life. Furthermore, Another characteristic of an adventure game is that the control of the character is not rich and that only simple, non-complex actions can be done with one character. This certainly applies to The Walking Dead, as we only control one character, Lee, and the action controls consist of merely walking around, pointing, and hovering our cursor over an object and clicking on it to interact with the game environment. There is not much variation in terms of the actions we can perform as a player as we are limited to the basic actions of the game.
we will now talk about the design qualities of the game in terms of course concepts we have discussed throughout the semester. The game objects in The Walking Dead are things that we can manipulate throughout the gameplay. This includes countless of clickable and interactable objects such as this pair of handcuffs which we can manipulate with a key so that Lee is set free. Or this window can be manipulated with our shoe so that Lee can escape the car. Game objects also include other characters that Lee, our protagonist, interacts with such as Kenny, Herschel, and Doug, and many more. Attributes are categories of information about game objects. There are two types of attributes named static and dynamic. Static attributes are the object's attributes that do not change states. For example, Clementine's name attribute has one fixed state all throughout the game. Her name was Clementine in the beginning and was still Clementine by the end of the game. Dynamic attributes, on the other hand, are the object's attributes that change throughout the game and has multiple possible states. An example of this is a police officer in the beginning of the game. His current life status attribute changed states from living to dead after he was killed during the car accident. Operative actions are the basic actions that a player can take. For instance, we can make Lee walk around in the game using the left analog stick in the PlayStation 4. We can also move the cursor or pointer around the screen by using the right analog stick. Finally, we can also use either the triangle, square, X, and circle buttons to choose which actions or dialogue we want to perform at a specific moment. Resultant actions are the strategic consequences of series of operative actions that are used to achieve a specific goal. In our gameplay, for example, there was a point where we had to use stealth and quietly kill a zombie without notifying all other other zombies at once. We approach this in a strategic manner by picking up a pillow, which is basic operative actions in and off itself, and shooting a gun, which is another operative action. By combining the two actions and firing the gun through the pillow, what we ended up doing is silencing the gunshot and minimizing the noise that we produce, thereby avoiding the other zombies from attacking us. This is a strategic move that clearly paid off seeing as the zombies did not end up charging right at us. It is also worth mentioning that The Walking Dead does not require much skill to play. The player simply has to have enough physical skills to be able to pick up a controller and be able to manipulate the left analog stick, the right analog stick, and one of the triangle, square, X, or circle buttons on the controller. In terms of mental skills, the game does not feature many puzzle-solving challenges of great difficulty as it is more of a dialogue-driven kind of game. According to David Parlett, operational rules are the rules that relate directly to the player's behavior and interaction with the game. Some examples of operational rules in our game consist of walking around by moving the cursor, using the analog sticks, and pressing the circle X, square, or triangle button to perform various actions or choose which dialogue to speak. Behavioral rules are the rules that are implicit to the game and exhibits good sportsmanship. In our game, an example of behavioral rule is by responding in a timely manner and not waiting for the timer to run down before answering. When it comes to gamer motivations, we believe that the players would be most attracted to this game are discovery-oriented players as well as story-oriented players. Players who love to explore the in-game environments and tinker with every game object would love this game because the amount of things that they could discover through interacting with the countless game objects are insurmountable. On the other hand, players who love a rich, elaborate plot with interesting characters would also love The Walking Dead as it is primarily a character-driven type of game. This means that it involves several character interactions and hours of dialogue, with each of the conversation revealing more information and more background story about each of the characters and their life before the apocalypse. There are also several goals in this game, which are tasks that our player has to complete with conflicts or issues, such as person versus person, being the obstacles that are preventing the player from easily reaching this goal. 
An example of a goal that our protagonist had to achieve was shooting the police officer with a shotgun in the beginning of the game. Just before he gets the chance to attack Lee, the officer himself presented a challenge and prevented Lee from easily reaching this goal, but he overcomes this obstacle and shoots him anyway. Speaking of Lee, let's talk about player representation. We are represented in this game as a former university professor who is caring and tough when need be. The fact that he was a professor gives us a sense of importance since this demonstrates that he is a capable person with a high level of intelligence. Couple this with the fact that he is also a tough person that has no problems doing what needs to be done, such as killing off his own zombie brother, and we got ourselves a strong character that is a perfect fit for the protagonist role. As an aside, this is actually the type of person I would want to team up with should an actual zombie apocalypse take place. Player agency is when a player chooses meaningful choices and manipulates the outcome of a game. A choice, by the way, is any moment during the gameplay where the player could perform two or more distinct actions. For example, we were faced with a tough decision of choosing to save either Duck or Sean as they were being attacked by zombies. I made the choice of saving Duck seeing as he is just a little kid who could not possibly defend himself against his attacker. The meaningful consequence of this action resulted in Herschel getting mad at our protagonist and kicking us off his farm by saying Get the fuck out of here! Had we saved Sean instead, we would not have been kicked out so rudely by Herschel, which means that our gameplay was seriously affected by the meaningful choice that we made. We believe the hardware we have decided to use, the PS4, is best for this specific game because gamers usually play the PS4s on TVs that are more cinematic or movie-like when we play the game, whereas, for example, in PC, PC games would often be played on a small computer monitor. Playing on TV adds a layer of immersion to the whole experience and makes the game even more engaging as not only do the players play, they would also feel as if they were watching a film simultaneously. The dark tone of the story also presented several conflicts, some of which we will now discuss. For instance, the most obvious conflict are between persons versus zombies which is prevalent throughout the game. Another conflict related to the previous one is person versus nature. As the non-zombie humans try their best to survive the apocalypse and not get bitten. Lastly, another example is person versus self. As Lee faced the challenge of deciding whether or not to tell the rest of the crew his secret and that he is actually an escaped convict. Telltale's The Walking Dead series is marketed and sold in an episodic format. This means that the individual episodes are released periodically and frequently, but each of these episodes are shorter in length in terms of gameplay when compared to a single conventional video game. A series of episodes have continuity, which means that episode 2 will continue on the events that transpired in episode 1. Episode 3 will continue on the events that happened in episode 2 and so on. This business model led to the success of the game series for several advantageous reasons. One reason is that by having the option of selling the first episode individually, players will be more inclined to buy a single episode that is considerably cheaper than the whole season's worth of games. Take this for example. On the PlayStation Store, a single episode is sold for $4.99, while the whole season is sold for $15.99. A player who might initially be reluctant might buy the first episode, not only because it is cheaper, but also to try out the game and see if they like it. Should they end up liking the game, they would need to buy the rest of the season, which is another $15.99 toward Telltale's revenue. If Telltale did not offer a single episode option, then the player might have been immediately turned away by the hefty price tag of the season bundle. Another reason this business model led to the success is because earlier episodes increases their exposure and brand recognition of future episodes, which leads to more sales for each subsequent installment. For instance, by the time episode 2 was released, gamers have already played episode 1 and enjoyed it, and they could have been more hooked by to the story so much to the point where they are buying episode 2, just because they want to know what happened next in the story. 
This model has been so successful lately, and this is why Telltale has been implementing the same model for virtually all the other games including Tales from Borderlands, The Wolf Among Us, Batman, and Guardians of the Galaxy. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.